Hey folks, it's Dag, and this video we're going to look at vacuforming plastic over a plug or over something you're trying to create, okay? So basically I'm doing this for a friend who reached out for me. I'm going to be doing some what I call micro canopies. Now these are for model airplanes, and if you haven't followed my channel, I'm obsessed with model aircraft. It's not what I do for a living though. I work in the entertainment industry on the tech side, but I'm obsessed with designing my own aircraft and flying them. But with that, because I've done it so long, I've learned a few tricks. So I decided to figure out how to, on the cheap, the cheapest way possible, uh, do some vacuum forming for my friend. And basically, folks, I did some research and went on Amazon and found this really inexpensive, I mean, very inexpensive little vacuum forming machine. Now, back in the day, I used to have one that was one foot by about 27 inches, uh, but that was back in the 80s and 90s. But I wanted to figure out a way to do it cheap. If you don't know what vacuum forming is, folks, basically it's where you heat up plastic, you pull it over something, and then you use a vacuum or a suction to pull it down tight, and you get basically what you're trying to create. So this ultimately is what we're going to be making with this vacuum form machine. Before you start diving in too deep about the vacuum forming, I want to talk about the machine itself, okay? And it's a really slick little machine, but basically you have the unit, and then you have the material that you're going to heat up and pull over your plug. That material is held with these two frames right here that are magnetic. It's really a neat machine because magnetically a lot of the stuff's held together. And this is your power button that you're going to heat up the element that's going to basically make this uh, plastic start to melt. When we look at the back of the unit, basically you got your plug right here that is going to power it. Okay, so you got to plug this in. And then there's got to be a way that you're going to pull a vacuum on it. And that's that hole right there. And then it came with this adapter that I'm not real happy with the adapter. So I 3D printed my own, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. But basically, that's the unit. So here's a closer picture of the frame, and it has magnets on it. And there's the piece of plastic that you sit around uh, or sit on that seal. And then you align the plastic in the middle of that, and then the frame sandwiches down over it. You're also going to have to decide what you're going to basically uh, make. And these are the uh, canopies I'm using. Now, I use Fusion 360 to do this entire thing, and I've sped this video here up greatly, like a thousand times. And I use Fusion 360 for everything I design. And if you're a hobbyist, Fusion 360 is awesome. Um, if not, and if you don't want all of this stuff, I'll dump these canopies on my Patreon uh, later on this week. But basically, folks, you've got to have whatever you're going to make, you know, whatever you're wanting to vacuum form. Now, these machines are, believe it or not, made for food industry, too. People can vacuum form uh, like over a piece of candy and then use it as the mold that you're going to make your candy from. But I'm using it for model aviation in my hobby. But before we can 3D print anything, folks, we have to go into my slicer and this basically takes my 3D model from Fusion 360 and outputs it so I can put it into my 3D printer and then print it, okay? So in my printer, folks, and I've sped this up like 10,000 bazillion times, so basically this is one of four plugs that I made that we're going to make the canopies from. And here's what the plug looks like sitting just in the printer. Now, if you notice the top of this picture, you can see that I've already heated the plastic because it's starting to bow. The directions say you want it to bow about one inch. So what we're going to do now, folks, is we're going to do uh, four of these canopies. And you can see I pull it down on there, and with the vacuum running, it pulls it right down and sucks it up tight. Now, keep in mind, you might have to make different size plugs depending on how the material pulls around the plastic. Uh, that first one worked pretty good. Number two here, which is the blue one, it actually worked a little bit better uh, for making the canopies. Um, ultimately, number two and three gave me the best product that I was trying to create. And keep in mind, though, uh, and you can see how much that plastic sagging on that. I still have a lot more experimentation to go to see how hot is too hot and see how it behaves. But I think you kind of get the gist here that we're getting plastic really hot. We're pulling it down over our plug and the vacuum is pulling air through the bottom there really fast and it sucks it up tight. Okay, so basically that's vacuum forming. Okay, we're using the vacuum to form the plastic around the plug. 
So this is what the four parts look like once always done. Those wrinkles are fine in the plastic as long as they don't come up onto the part that you're trying to cut out. Now later on in this video, I'll show you where I 3D printed the front face of a person and try to pull some um, basically molds off of it and it didn't work very good. And I'll tell you why when we get to that. Um, the green here, folks, didn't work out that great because it just didn't pull the material down as tight as I thought it would do. Now, the reason I got holes in there is sometimes you got to create your plug to have holes so that the vacuum can pull tight and pull air through all the different parts. Uh, number two here, or one, I can't remember. No, this is actually technically number one. Um, one worked okay. Now, notice how high the canopy is. I have about a half inch of lifting up the canopy itself, and it worked pretty good. But number two here um work virtually perfect again ignore those wrinkles on the flat part on the bottom those don't matter as long as it's not on the part that you're going to cut out and use and i really like the way this one worked right here uh just because of the the output of the product that i was doing um number three here also was another you know winner winner chicken dinner so basically number two and three worked uh flawlessly and there's not really a difference between the two. Now, you can put little lines and little parts and things in it that will show up in your part. And that's what I was trying to do here. So out of these four, number two and number three, without a doubt, are the winners. But keep in mind, we've still got to cut out our parts out of this. And this is where you got to take your time. So on number one here, when I cut it out. Now, look, folks, realistically, this would work on a micro model airplane right here. Okay, now I'm a perfectionist. I'm a freak about things, but this one would work. Okay, but this one just had a little bit better detail. It pulled a little bit cleaner, the plastic over it. So there's there's like less um, uh, kind of screw ups in the plastic. The plastic looks really smooth. It looks really good. Uh, one thing about 3D printing and doing these, you got to print with a layer height of 0 0.05 millimeter, 0 0.05, not even 0 0.1, but 0 0.05 millimeter or you'll end up with too many lines in this and they'll show up in the plastic so you really want to print with the the minimum thickness you can on your printer and you know 0.05 or 0.02 is about the thinnest i ever get but this worked really 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 sharp so if you look at number one here folks you know it's decent um but it's not nearly as good as, as number two was now keep in mind you can clean these up and and i'll show you in a minute how you could put either pinstriping tape on it or you could put paint and um but two and three were great number four you see those edges around it that's because that green just didn't pull it down tight enough now i decided to throw a little bit of paint on this is terrible looking but just gives you an idea of how you could detail it or you could use pinstriping tape and do it uh, but essentially folks one of the things I find with all the videos I've done and all the followers I've actually talked to is how frustrated they get when they first start a project. And you're going to screw things up. You're, you're going to make mistakes. You just got to learn what's going to work to get the best output of the type of product you're trying to create or the item. Um, you know, I'm going to do some uh, wheel pants. I'm going to do some cowlings. I'm going to do different types of um canopies here now here's where i decided to throw together and 3d print this face because i wanted to just screw around with this thing and see how basically how strong the vacuum is because the the stronger the vacuum pulling on this is the more it's going to pull the plastic down but you also got to get the plastic at the right temperature that it won't wrinkle or crease or maybe even get too thin so I decided to um, just take and 3D print three faces, and I only tried to do the large face. The, the smaller ones just weren't worth <clears throat> talking about in this video because they pulled fine, but they were just dinky little molds, basically. <clears throat> Excuse me. But essentially, folks, um, you just gotta you just gotta have the tenacity to just keep pushing through, even if you screw things up. Okay, it's just gonna happen, and. Here is the face, and you notice I got the plastic really hot, and it pulled down, and it worked, but it did not work flawlessly. I actually have some wrinkles in it, um, and I, I tried three poles on it, and all three basically had some flaws in them. And essentially what I need to do, folks, is lift this face up off that, um, 
uh, bed a little bit, about five millimeters, maybe eight millimeters. And I think it would have pulled fine. But as you can see, folks, here, I have some pretty big wrinkles, and I really don't like them. So now this is if you'd be making a mold or something like that, or maybe, um, you know, a, a fake like hockey mask or something for the front of this, this character. And then I want to talk about screw ups. So folks, basically this plastic comes with two very, very thin films of plastic to keep it from being damaged. And I peeled off both sides. But what I didn't realize is I had two pieces of plastic together and put it in the machine. So this is a complete crash and burn, but it's going to happen. Now I want to talk about the vacuum adapter that comes with it. I really didn't like this because it didn't work at all with my shop vac. And um, I was going to have to get gaffer's tape um, or duct tape. Gaffer tapes is an entertainment phrase for a tape. Well, it's a type of tape. Don't want to get too nerdy on you. But um, you would have to duct tape this whole thing to kind of get it to fit right. And I just didn't like this. You know, this just was cheap to me. So what I decided to do is 3D print and an adapter. And uh, the adapter would basically slide on to the machine. I had a place for a set screw there, but I didn't need it because everything fit so well. And essentially, that's what I ended up with. And it was just flawless, folks. So in review, folks, this thing was $81 uh, or $82 once you round it all up. And then you got to pay tax, of course. But it definitely was worth the investment. The uh, plastic materials uh, are about 40 bucks, and you get 40 sheets. So I thought that was expensive. You might be able to find it cheaper. So it's about a buck every time you pull one of these so when you look at this this is four dollars here but folks if, if you are wanting to get into vacuum forming and you know i've got a lot of friends that do cosplay a lot of people that are into rocketry a lot of people that are in aviation of course and you know even in the entertainment industry there's massive vacuum form machines used for props and stuff but essentially, I think this was kick-ass. Um, it's awesome for my buddy who's 92 years old and needed these, and he couldn't figure out how to do it. So I decided I'd jump in there and get it done. So thanks for watching, everybody. Please like and subscribe. Have an awesome day. And my robotic baby says hi to you. And uh, she's a skydiver. And I'll see you next time. Take care and rock on.